Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about uh, the ringing effect uh, on, in the DC-DC converter. As you can see in this picture, what you have uh, in, a, in a half bridge configuration, but in any DC-DC converter, whenever you put a MOS, a power MOSFET with a, a, a driver, you're gonna have gate loops and also the power loops. You're gonna have also many, 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 many loops, uh, also parasitic capacitance and uh, ca parasitic inductance as well. In this simulation, we, we will consider the gate loops, the common, the common source inductance, the common drain inductance, which is not represented here, and the complete power loop that it will create alongside the circuit. So, uh, what does it imply? In a back converter, for instance, in a switching node of a any half bridge configuration, but specifically in a back converter, VIN, on the switching node, you will, you will have a square wave voltage between zero and the input voltage. Now, if you add the parasitic inductance effect, what you're gonna have is a, a spike plus a ringing. These spikes can be dangerous because uh, they can go higher than than the normal VDS and they can de de and they can destroy your circuit. So let's simulate this on a LT spice example. This is just a normal back converter. Uh, let's just run the simulation and as you can see these are the waveform. This is the inductor waveform, and this is the output voltage, which is half of the input voltage because I put uh, 0.5 as, um, as duty cycle. Now let's open this simulation instead. As you can see, we have the gate inductance and all the inductances, uh, parasite inductances of the MOSFET and, and the power loops. If we rerun the simulation, you can see that there are some spikes on the switch node voltage. So how can you adjust these spikes? Well, basically there are three factors. The first is the dead time. If you increase the dead time, you can also allow yourself to avoid some spikes, but mostly you reduce some spikes by adding a serious resistance on the gate Let's put it just uh, on 5 ohm. Do not increase too much the gate resistance, otherwise you are going to slow down your MOSFET. And to put a high pass and a low pass filter here on the switch inside, with uh, a reasonably high enough resistance and a low capacitor, because you have to basically you have to check what is the frequency of this uh, resonance. And uh, if you see on LT Spice, it's gonna be something around half gigahertz, 300 megahertz, or something, or something of the sort. As you can see on LT Spice, I have simulated a frequency of 250 megahertz. Uh, sorry, maybe it is even even less. Oh, 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 oh. 261 megahertz. Let's zoom again. Yes. 267 megahertz. So you have this, uh, you have this resonance, and you have somehow to dump this resonance. Let's play on the dead time. Low pass filter here, and gate resistor there. Now let's run again the simulation and let's see the result. The ringing effect should be dumped. This, but okay, yeah. As you can see. The design was correct, since I dumped correctly. Yes, there is still a bit of oscillation, but is uh, very, very far better than before. So I'm quite proud of this. If you want to do this in, in real life, in a laboratory, you should check your frequency on, a, on the oscilloscope, but pay attention that whenever you measure this uh, resonance with the oscilloscope, you are adding some parasitic inductances as well, so you have to be extra careful. But basically, that's it.
Now I want you to show you my switching node voltage of my project thesis. As you can see, this is the effect of the dead time plus the ringing. Whenever you lower the dead time, this, uh, this area, this flat area here, will reduce. So you have to design also the dead time as well. But uh, some ringing will still be present. So it is very unlikely to happen to have a so smooth gate voltage like this. You have, you have to be very, very skillful in making a good design. Now I want to open, I want to open this project, which is basically a non-inverted, a non-inverting back boost. And as you can see, the trick to reduce the ringing is to place the vias as near as possible to the input side. So, if if we draw the if we uh, if hypothetically, if we, if we are gonna and are gonna draw if we are gonna draw the the path that the current the current is is, um, is choosing, well, basically, this via this vi uh, this via. Let's change the color. You see that this this via this node here is the ground power. And also this node here is the ground power. So the current here is coming from the inductor. And basically the loop itself will be something like this. From here to there. Now if you use the keycard tool, you can go to calculation tool. You can even allow yourself to calculate the parasitic resistance as well as the parasitic inductance which is made which is making which is made with this uh, with this loop so you can estimate almost correctly what is the power inductances uh, gate loop inductance and so on